Park. Now to our early match from Football Park today, from headquarters, the game between North Adelaide and Woodville. North Adelaide had to win the game to give themselves any chance of playing off in the finals, but of course they also had to hope that Glenelg was defeated by Sturt and that didn't eventuate. We join this match at the start of the last quarter. Your commentators, Jerry Harrison and Daryl Hicks. North Adelaide's turn to use the slight breeze at Football Park. And Woodville cutting North Adelaide's lead from 35 back to 15 points at three-quarter time. Holding the ball, says umpire Kinnear, and Michael Templeton puts the Warrior forward. 15-metre penalty. Start with it. Stephen Nichols on 99 goals. But the pack is pretty crowded. Chipping short, Simmons in front, fists away. Harris bursting forward. Can he break the pack? Wide to Peniza. Excellent play. The shot. Coming back, but wide. And Woodville now back within 14 points. 81 plays 95. Tremendous fight back by Woodville in the third term. They kick seven goals, four to four two. Right forward pocket. Hanging on will go to North Adelaide. Daryl Hart will take the kick out of the back pocket. And North Adelaide really under the microscope. Fighting for survival in 88. 35 point lead at half time cut to 15. And Mick Redden forced to come on the ground to replace the injured, injured Andrew Jarman. Well placed kick finds Sanders. Just ahead of the half back line and within the centre square distance to the centre half forward spot and the mark from behind by Reckner with ease. Slips it wide Fuller's loose showing his experience. Champion wants the ball though. Nichols the lead now Fuller goes for him. Nichols has got a metre or so and a good take good lead Stephen Nichols well dispatched by Ron Fuller and in fact when Nichols saw Fuller gain possession he started licking the chops as he headed for the space off-footed John Riley, and this could be goal number 100 for the season. It's online. It's there. 100 goals to Stephen Nichols. Well, what a passage of play. Ron Fuller set side from centre wing, had a bounce. Nichols reacted, led between two opponents, high the take, and a brilliant kick with the left foot. Lots of supporters have screamed on. The Red Coats are protecting Stephen Nichols. But a tremendous performance. Again, a ton to the champion full forward. We we'll return to Carmen Football Park, and that puts Woodville back within eight points of North Adelaide, just three minutes into the final term. Negri the tap. Templeton Sanders intercepts, goes high wide Cooks the chance and paid the free rather Darren Reeves, even smaller than David Cooks his first game, busy player chipping short, looking for Clisby at the back is Parker, but Lunn takes the ball with desperation to the pocket North Adelaide taking risks to play Reeves in his first game. They have the injured heart. Andrew Jarman is off the ground. Left from a clash of heads or a knock to the head in the third term. Negri does battle with Parker. Parker the tap. Reckner wide. Hart double turning. Chance with the left snapping to the pocket. And a brilliant diving mark taken then. Peter Bennett. So Bennett, who was busy in the third term when he kicked two goals for a total of three for the game, is 30 metres out, almost right in front, wind at his back. Balanced action, the kick across the face for a point. North Adelaide needing to be accurate. 96 plays 87, north by nine. There's O'Dwyer, the kick in. 
Romano Negri spoiled well by Big Redden. North looking to go back into attack. Redden puts it high. Plisby versus O'Dwyer. Got hands to the ball. Cooks couldn't control it. Daryl Hart. Offline. Another opportunity going begging. And the Roosters now lead by 10 points. 26 shots to 22. O'Dwyer making Hart run. Passes the ball to Harris. That's good play from Harris. Hart just cannot run. The second bounce. Third. Testing the forward line. Dropping back for Harper. Well placed and well played Kevin Harris. Chipping short for Detman. Good ball control with Woodville. To Templeton. Inside half forward. Undecided. Decides to go back and shoot. Fuller leads wide. Templeton has two. Take an enormous kick. Puts it to the square, wide it goes. Fist it away. Clomp. Trapped and tackled hard. Tottenham. Out for Nichols. The shot, that left foot. 101. What a kick. Woodville, 14 9 93. North, 14 13 97. Well, this certainly could be a match-winning performance by Stephen Nichols. Now seven goals for the game, and he is very dangerous once he gets balanced on that left foot. And he speared that through from an acute angle, carrying past 100 goals to 101. But more importantly, Woodville to within four points of the Roosters, who are fighting for survival. Negri dominated that time. Redden got it beautifully to Hart. He drives low, but Reckner played front spot, causing Reeves to knock away. O'Dwyer swings it wide for Reckner, giving ground for McDonald, and a high kick, little distance, really sets uh, a task for his players further afield. Clem to the line, will get a free kick for a push in the back. Darren Clem, big contributor, particularly since half time, kicked two goals in the third term. Templeton over to Panizza. Good tackle by Klomp. Detman trying to work through. North want the free kick, but it's the white line that's the winner for a throw-in. Seven minutes into the final term. North began 15 points clear, and that lead has been cut to four. Negri, Klomp. Hart can't get clear. David Tiller, again the boundary. A measure of the intensity and commitment of both sides. Nichols, 101 goals. Negri to Clem. What an impact big Romano Negri has had. Almost every centre square bounce and effective at boundaries. Post to Parker. Park of the tap, Hart, no ball. To Darren Jarman, perfectly placed, can play on. Straightens, kicks across the body with that familiar action. A booming kick offline. 14-14, 98. Woodville, 14-9-93. Five points of difference. Darren Jarman has notched three goals so far. Good lead here from Lunn. Dwyer thought about it, now swings wide to a better lead from Detman. So Woodville supplying the options, the work rate higher than North, who will need to keep the game at close quarters to control this Woodville run. Clem, centre wing. The running support of Grant, through half forward, time to have a look, steady. Inside half forward, finds Parsons. Across to half forward, looking for Templeton, but he's found Tottenham, who dropped into the space. And suddenly, the scales have turned. Tottenham. Brought into the side as an interchange player, late. Directly in front of goal for a very important kick. Distance, accuracy there. So Woodville hit the front at the nine-minute mark of this final turn by one point. Good ball control. A lot of hard work and running. And Tottenham dropping down from centre wing. 
his first goal. And Woodville back from 34, 35 points down at half time, 15 at three quarter, taking the lead at the nine minute mark of the final quarter, now lead by two points. Redden, Negri. Craig tripped, play on. Chance for Woodville again, that's Tiller covering. David Tiller, named on the interchange, started and has been on all day. Neil Craig in a bit of trouble with a foot. Redden using the body. Klomp. Darren Jarman. Better game from Jarman today. Bennett. Clisby. Trapped by... Well played from Woodville. Darren Grant. Harris. Templeton. Nichols wide. Clear. Riley takes it wide for Paul Arnold. Goes to the boundary line. Nichols. Brings the ball back with a check side. Out of bounce on the full. And Woodville now still by two points. 11 minutes into the final. Long ball. Um, Andrew Jarman being brought back onto the ground. Max Parker going to the bench. And North really looking to pull something out of the fire. But back come Woodville. Driven deep by Totham again. Newton at the back of the pack. Well spoiled Arnold. Tiller through, Craig took it, gave it to John Riley. Now Cooks, Wyatt is still looking for Hart, and into the centre of the ground where Redden is loose. The North looking, Redden looking for options. Big lead from Clisby, awkward kick finds Cooks in the centre. He drives long, looking for Andrew Jarman versus Lunn. Lunn playing the front spot well. Reckner manhandling Andrew Jarman behind play. Lund gets the kick, there'll be an FAD downfield. Play to advantage as O'Dwyer comes clear. Kicks centre wing where he finds Ron Fuller and Woodville's confidence growing. Negri in the centre of the ground. He had the running support of Detman. Well blocked by Darren Jarman. A high kick from Negri, centre half forward. Redden across covering well takes the good mark at centre half back and that was a very difficult mark across in the sun between two teammates chipping for Tiller as Arnold wide back turns to Klomp just in trouble unlucky Clem Burton Parsons going for the boundary Harris Clem Woodville have the numbers Peniza centering for Detman. The work weight from the Warriors is good. Templeton through half forward, looking Nichols in the centre. The perfect kick. As Fuller wide decides to shoot. 35 metres out into the breeze with seven goals on the board. Stephen Nichols. Once again, the kick is perfect for number eight. The Woodville Warriors, 16-9-105, North 14-13-97. Well, Stephen Nichols really needed to kick that goal. Fuller had dropped into the pocket loose. He dropped the eyes, put the ball down, paid no attention, but still a match-winning performance from the spearhead. Magnificent execution of that kick into what breeze there is for his eight. And Woodville... Eight points clear now at the 13 and a half minute mark of this final term. And uh, North Adelaide ringing the changes, trying to get some life. Robert's about to come back on as Redden gets the tap. Charging through went Tottenham, left it behind. Quick kick was taken by Ryan at half back. And the quick kick forward came from Harper as Ryan now. For North Adelaide, two centre wing. Peter Bennett, front spot, will get the free kick. He's now being opposed by Darren Grant, who started that centre wing. Kick from Bennett hasn't all that much distance. Getting up high as Clisby working hard. It was taken by Redden, tried to work it to Andrew Jarman. He's well smothered. And the resulting bounces at centre half forward for North. Eight points in favour of Woodville. 
They work hard. Burton trying to back out of the pack. And overrunning the ball was Rees, but Reckless caught. Allowed to play. O'Dwyer loose. Templeton possession. Woodville to the centre wing spot. Craig there. Well done versus Harper. And Neil Craig the kick just ahead of half back. Wide looking for Klomp. Taken out well by Getman. Tempo of the game really picking up. North Adelaide have to win to retain their chances. No doubt the Glenelg players and Michael Noonan looks at the option. He's just transferred Clisby to centre half back. John Roberts is back at full forward. Hard to snap kick. And Andrew Jarman under the ball. Alex Lund takes the safe mark. He has Darren Grant midfield. Also Scott Parsons. Off to Peniza, the runner through half forward inside his opponent. Chipping at the goal face for Newton, for champion. And beating both players out. Well, we can, can confirm for sure and certain tonight that it is the end of the season for North Adelaide. Woodville defeated North Adelaide last year's Premiers by 19 points. In fact, interestingly enough, North Adelaide kicked just four goals after half time compared to Woodville's 13. So it was 18 9, 117 to North 14 4, 98. Nichols kicked nine, that's 103 for the season, a fantastic performance. Clem kicked two and Templeton two. And for North, Darren Jarman was their chief goal kicker. He kicked three, Coops kicked three. In fact, Darren Jarman kicked five, Coops, Coops kicked three, Clisby and Bennett kicked two each. Let's now check results of the other four matches played. We've just had uh, news that Port Adelaide has in fact defeated. Uh, Norwood, they won the match by 29 points, 12-13, played 8-8 eight, eight at the finish, so 85 up against 56, a good win there to Port Adelaide over Norwood, that was the late game at Footy Park, and judging from what we've heard, there was a huge crowd down there. Glenelg defeated Sturt by 90 points at the Bay Oval, a huge win to the Bays, you have the goal kickers, Melican was the chief goal kicker for Glenelg, he kicked 6 and Wilmot kicked 3 for Sturt. Central District defeated West Torrens by 50 points, Big Man to make a kick 5, and Edmonds for Torrens was their chief goal kicker. He kicked four, so Central District defeating West Torrens at Theberton. And at the Richmond Oval, West Adelaide finished the season on a high. They defeated South Adelaide by 40 points. Lammy kicked six and Filkey kicked four for West and for South. Aitken and Schmid kicked four each. Let's check the all-important ladder now. Port Adelaide on top. Central in second position, Norwood in third spot, so those three don't change from last week. Glenelg moved to fourth, but as Kim just mentioned to me, it's incidental, it doesn't really matter. They still play Stude in the elimination final next week. And then North, out of the five, of course, and Woodville West, Torrance and South Adelaide. What a great game in Melbourne today. Melbourne defeated the West Coast Eagles by two points. They kicked a goal within a couple of minutes of the siren. And tomorrow, Carlton and Collingwood in the qualifying final. Next Saturday here in South Australia, two very exciting games <coughs> on September the 10th, Central and Norwood in the qualifying final, then the all-important elimination final between Glenelg and the Sturt. Kim Dillon joins us once again in the studio. Kim, they ran right over the top of Sturt, didn't they, the base today? They certainly did. They meant business right from the very start, but to Sturt's credit in that first term, they fought back and scores were pretty level at quarter time. But after that, though, now I think the, the architect of the victory, or if I could say two architects of the victory, one was Peter Kerry when he was thrown onto the ball. He completely outclassed in the centre square Kitsky and Reynolds, and the other one was Alan Stringer, who, in my opinion, was best on ground. And uh, Peter Kerry did a mammoth job? Oh, he did, as I just mentioned. Yeah, he was tremendous. He uh, completely outpointed. Uh, Kitsky and Reynolds and he's done that on a number of occasions and uh, we might talk about it in the late show but a lot of uh, the so-called experts around town are suggesting that uh, maybe Kitsky and Reynolds to, to for the use of a better word are perhaps are a little bit soft mm. in their approach to the body. Mm. Actually I meant to say David Marshall he too was a whiz wasn't he? Yes he was great on uh, his centre wing in fact I think at one stage there he had Scott Russell moved away from him and of course Scott Russell that's another story cleaned up by Wayne Stringer in the uh, first term Wayne Stringer's been reported um, it, it, it was a high blow, so I haven't actually seen the vision of it. Mm. But, uh, gee, that would be uh, unfortunate if something was to come out of that because uh, I would say this would probably be Wayne Stringer's last season. And Chris Duthie. Yeah, that's uh, another story as well. Duthie uh, appeared to be an injured calf mm. muscle, we believe. Mm. So his season would be over. He had to be assisted off the ground by the trainers. And that's a tragedy because he's just fought back from injury. And to go out like that, it must be very frustrating on the eve of the finals. Isn't it amazing that the Bays have uh, really... Sturt have really had the wood on the Bays all year, but when it counts, 
the Bays can pull through. Yeah, certainly, not only that day, but gee, uh, Glenelg uh, uh, such a good side at, at the Bay. Yep. And it'll be a different story next week, but the big question mark here is, no matter where you're playing and the fact that it is another game, it's got to be in the back of the mind that you were walloped only seven days ago by 90 points. Mm. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see how Sturt come up. And, of course, they've only been beaten the, the once here by West Adelaide. Who was the better side, do you think, Sturt or Glenelg? Will Sturt bounce back next week? Well, it's hard to tell. I would imagine the score will be a lot closer than what mm. it is today, but to, we'll just wait and see what eventuates throughout the week. As the old story, you know, a week's a long time in football. Anything can happen. Well, I wish we could be in two places at once, but North Adelaide just not good enough. No, and uh, they led by 30-odd points, I believe, over Woodville, mm. and uh, I'm pretty... Uh, I'm not excited, that sounds very biased, but I tipped Woodville today because mm. I just felt that North had had so many chances and they hadn't been able to produce it. And uh, Woodville had a little bit to play for as well. They had a little bit of pride. There was the ne Negri Parker, um, uh, what can you use for that <laughs> what type of word? The fact that you know Park Negri couldn't get a real go with Woodville last year because Parker was there. Mm. Parker uh, mm. left for different reasons, went to uh, North Adelaide. It's the first time mm. he's come up against his old side. He'd been injured the previous two times. Rivalry. Rivalry. <laughs> well, that's probably the word. <laughs> But, uh, you know, there was that reason. The fact that Nichols had the opportunity to kick 100, which he did, which is a magnificent performance. Mm, mm. All right, just whizzing through the... Well, obviously, a strong win to Port Adelaide, so they retain the top spot. Yeah, unbelievable. Trained yeah. All, trailed all day, down about three goals, and, and a low-scoring game, down three goals at, uh, in the third quarter. And, uh, you know, they just keep plugging away. And a great job, Jack Carl, hasn't he? He certainly yeah. has. South Adelaide, just the one win for the season, they'd be disappointed. West Adelaide finished on a high. They did, but, mm. uh, you know, I'll credit the South, they were with them for a half, and, uh, you know, they'll improve. It's uh, gee, a frustrating, yeah, long season for John Reid and the players. And Central District, well, they, uh, they got out of the game. They did, 21 yeah. points down at, uh, during the second quarter, but more importantly, Smith got through the game OK, and Jonas picked up a few touches. I've got to put you on the spot now. Who will play in the grand final? Is it still too early? No, oh, I'm not even going to ask. There's a long way to go. You know, okay. Port look good. They've got one game there. OK, thanks, Kim. That's our program. Don't forget League Football action tonight at 10.40. Until then, good night, everyone.